welcome to the DC Today. It is Wednesday afternoon. I uh, hope you were well served by my partner, Brian Seitel's wonderful discussion and uh, contribution yesterday. And I think you will be by uh, my other partner, Trevor Cummings, his work tomorrow. Um, I'm able to squeeze this in here today, but I literally am just kind of running all over lots of meetings and whatnot here in New York. And so my time has been a bit limited. And so I'll uh, just tell you today uh, that it was a very bizarre day in the markets. And um, basically, the Dow ended up up 10 points on the day, and it had been down not quite 500, but within a whisker of down 500 points. So um, I think a lot of people want to know why, and I would love to give you a reason. Uh, the thing I want to tell you is not to listen to anyone giving you the reason. There wasn't an announcement at the uh, you know hour and a half point, or let's see, it looks like the uh, bottom of the day happened. Um, let's call it two hours into trading. Um, there wasn't some announcement from the Fed that reversed things. There wasn't a particular profit announcement. You know, there, there just sometimes is not an easy, coherent way to make heads and tails of why the market does in a given day what it does. Um, I think the broader narrative is very uh, explainable, which is that we're in a period of elevated volatility around pretty justifiable uncertainty uh, as to whether or not um, the market is going a certain direction or another one. Um, you, you do uh, have uh, a vulnerability around this earnings season. We're getting deeper into earnings season. It hasn't quite broken. I, I hate using this term for a lot of reasons, but it hasn't quite broken in the Darwinian direction that I think it usually does, which is to say, it's not that everything is going higher, everything's going lower, but you sort of get disparate results based on individual results. And some companies can be really rewarded for great revenue growth or great execution or great forward guidance. And others can be punished for declining uh, growth expectations or something like that. It's a little too early to yet, uh, yet to detect a particular trend around some of that. But as we get really heavy into uh, further announcements today and through the rest of next week, I think we'll have a better idea. And I suspect that quote unquote Darwinian response will be the case. So the S&P was basically dead flat. The Dow was up 10 points. The NASDAQ was down 0.18%. So a little bit more downside there. It had been down 2% though when I was on Barney this morning at Fox when the market opened. Um, the clip of that uh, Varney clip, I was on for an hour with him. And, we, and so they have a little highlight reel of me talking about a number of different things. If you care about such stuff, that's at the dctoday.com and always at the Bonson Group's YouTube channel where all of our um, videos are archived and where you should be a subscriber. Um, okay, financials were top performing sector up 0.74%. Utilities were down a healthy 1.36%. The 10-year Treasury yield barely moved. It was down 1.8 basis points, so at 3.45%. Um, we do still have six days, or let's see, now I guess we have um, uh, four market days left in January. But as of right now, it's been a, a month to remember in the bond market uh, with bond prices rising quite a bit. Um, the PCE number comes Friday. That's the personal consumption expenditures that has traditionally been a widely used Fed metric on inflation. And that's more or less it. Um, I, I think that earnings season is the primary story right now in markets. And we continue to expect days that go up and days that go down and days that go up and down all in one day. And today you got down 500 and up 500 all within a few hours. Uh, that's the scoop at the DC today. Thank you for listening, watching, and reading. And Trevor will be with you tomorrow, and I will be with you in the Dividend Cafe on Friday. Thanks so much. <music>